Hello, welcome pen friends. Uh, back with another video. This is going to be a review of a ballpoint pen that was sent to me by Ferris Wheel Press. And they're going to be releasing these pens March 22nd, 2021. Uh, at least that's their target. Uh, they've been waiting for the printer for the uh, packaging for this pen. But they went ahead and sent the pens out. And I was um, lucky enough to, to get one from them. So this is a, a hefty pen. And it is, let's see, it's made out of, crafted from copper and shaped into a comfortably rounded square body. Well, it definitely is. It's comfortable. It has a nice weight to it that feels really good. But what we're going to do in this video is really look at this pen. And I'll take it apart so you can see, you know, how it works and what the little refill is like, which they're going to carry, the refills. Uh, it's, it's a custom refill, I believe. So, And then we're going to look at some comparisons with other pens just to see how it compares size-wise because I don't have anything that really compares. This is a, a really high-quality ballpoint pen, a high-end one, and I don't really have anything like that. But definitely I have a rollerball by... Um, Retro 51 so we can at least see you know where where we're at size wise and everything and then um, We'll write with it and then at the end I'll come face to face and we'll, and I'll just chat about what I like about the pen and what I don't like about it So let's get started here um, The best thing I can do I think is show you first they've engraved Ferris wheel press on the clip and It's really pretty real shiny and it does have a nice solid clip um I don't use a clip, but a lot of people do, so I want to point that out. And then they have put the name of the pen right here. Now, the color of this one is Tatler's Teal. So it's perfect for me. It's kind of a teal color. <clears throat> but there are five colors that are coming out, and I'll put that in the description box with, along with a link. So what you do to get the pen ready to write is turn this clockwise, and then your, your pen is ready to go. <clears throat> Oops, the camera doesn't know what I want to do. So the the uh, the end of the pen here has a real beautiful engraved piece that actually comes off, and that's where when we take that off, we'll be able to access the refill. And it has a a loop. I guess you could put it on a lanyard. I don't know if that's the plan or not, but this is an engraved piece here. <clears throat> Let's pull that off. So it just comes off like that. And then the refill is just screwed in. <clears throat> and it says medium ballpoint refill 1.0 millimeter. And it is German archival ink. Let's see if you can, I don't know if you can read that because this camera has its limitations, but it is black. It says black tie. And I have been using this for uh, about a week, or ever since I got it, I've been writing with it. So it just screws back in. <clears throat> Got to get it. Oh, I never have problems. What's going on? There we go. Okay. Just screws back in. Maybe I had it in the wrong position. And then this just sticks back on. And then you're good to go. So I did measure it and I got 22.2 grams. And that leads me to go ahead and grab the Retro 51. The Retro 51 is heavier. It's 30. Uh, I wrote down 30 grams. So, but it's not by that much because this is 22.2 grams. So let's get a few more comparisons going because I wanted to do that. Um, this is the pen I use all the time for my ballpoint. It's a Pilot Dr. Grip. Oops, let's see. <laughs> okay. I haven't done a pen review of any type in a while, and I've got a new sort of thing I'm trying here for the set. Okay, this is a Papermate Ink Joy, which is a 1.0 uh, also. Um, I have a little trouble with this with a little bit of glopping of the ink. So... I can use this for some things, but I have to kind of keep a tissue handy to wipe it off. It's a cheaper pen. I, I really greatly prefer the Dr. Grip refills to this Ink Joy. And then this is a uh, Paca pen, which just kind of posts like this. Uh, and these are, are different. The, these, uh, uh, it takes a lot more pressure. It's still nice. 
It's still a nice pen, but it's more of a pocket pen just for jotting for groceries. But I wanted you to see kind of how they compare. And then here is a fountain pen, a Lamy All Star. Um, let's put it on the other side so it's closer to our Ferris wheel press. It's similar in length, but uh, you can't really compare the two. Okay, so those are just comparisons kind of to get an idea. This is a very slim pen. I measured it at 9.27 millimeters. And I'll try to put that, you know, as a, a little tag on this video and also in the description box. I'm not used to all these new finagle things that I can do. So there's the comparisons. Um, it is weighty. It's much more similar to, to the Retro 51 in weight of course, and, and the details, the, the beautiful details, and also price range. So these two are, are quite compatible price range-wise. My understanding is this will be $58 um, US and uh, 63 Canadian dollars. So it is a high-end pen uh, to me. Uh, people who collect ballpoint pens will have to clue us in on this because I don't. I collect fountain pens, so... Okay, so let's see. We've done the comparisons. Let's write with the pen, and we'll keep our others handy, too. Um, I have gotten out my little, well, I have a grocery list <laughs> paper, and I also have this little uh, microlis. Oh, I can't pronounce that. Oh, please don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is a nice kind of a pretty much coated paper, and this is my... Um, commonplace notebook now that I just jot everything down in and most for the most part I'm doing like emergency plumbing things and market rates for fuel and oh boy all kinds of stuff but let's write with this because I've really been enjoying it so this is Ferris wheel press the scribe my handwriting is not very good today I'm a little bit shaky I don't know what's going on. I uh, probably just need to eat. And this is Tatler's Teal. Okay, let's write down the other colors. So they have said there's going to be five. There is Red Carpet, <clears throat> French Vanilla White, Lady Rose, Forget Me Not French Blue, okay, Forget Me Not French Blue, and of course there's the Tattler's Teal, which is this one, and I really like the color that they chose for me, it's very pretty, um, let's see, we always need cat food. We always need litter. <laughs> we always need coffee. Maybe we had a little too much today. Yeah, so this is obviously, I think this is too good to carry with me for coffee. I mean, for <laughs> coffee, for grocery list or even because I could lose it. So what I plan to do with mine is it'll live in my Knox Seed. It's a nice slim profile, so it'll go right beside my pencil. And, and that's nice because I what I have in here, I always have a fountain pen. Usually it's a, a Twisby um, with a gray ink. And then I like to have the, the ballpoint and the um, pencil right handy, right with this. So I really love the fact that this fits because it, it's nice and slim. So um, let's see. Not really sure how to proceed here, but I know what I said I was going to do. Okay, so let's get the other. Maybe I don't know whether I can demonstrate how this other pen glops because it probably won't do it. But let's go ahead and get a piece of paper here. We'll turn this list over and we'll just sort of compare things. And, and I'm learning at the same time as you. So this is the the Ferris wheel, press, the scribe. I haven't had any issues where I had to, you know, clean it off or anything. And anybody who uh, works with ballpoint pens in art or anything else knows what I mean by that. So I've been super pleased with it. 
Oh, okay, and here's the much cheaper Papermate Ink Joy. <clears throat> And I think you can already see there's a there's a difference in in that I glopped down a lot of ink, but it's still a nice pen. It's just not. I mean, it's going to smear if I use watercolor with it or highlight over it. That's that. I mean, I could tell you that because I know I've done it. And so I have a few of these left, and this is a 1.0 as well. Uh, but I I don't like that because I get a lot of glopping. So that's, you know, the, my solution was this pen, which is the Pilot Dr. Grip, full black. Pilot Dr. Grip, full black. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is, let's get this apart and see. Whoops. <laughs> oh boy. I don't want to lose any parts. I think this is a 1.02. Yeah, this is a 1.0. So we're, we are comparing apples here, sort of. I mean, not pen bodies at all, but, but in terms of what's going on inside the pen, they're all 1.0 millimeter. So at least there's that. But you can't compare materials because this is just plastic and rubber. And this is, you know, copper. It's beautifully styled. And it, it's a, a it's for stationary lovers that that really are looking for a quality pen. So you know, don't don't kill me in the comments, please. Um, <laughs> and I am just so privileged that I got to try this out. So now, I believe I'm using the same pressure. Yeah, and I do notice that the Pilot Doctor Grip is a little bit darker. But I also have had a few instances where I've highlighted over this and smeared it in my bullet journal. And I know that's not going to happen with this because I've tried it and it didn't. And I will show you, too, that I tried something else. I tried a little piece of art where I drew with the scribe just, you know, just symbols and things that I like to draw. And then I took three fountain pens, inks. I took this Pilot Orochizuku Abusu 100th Anniversary and Sailor 50 States Colorado, I think was this one. And then Noodler's Apache Sunset as my colors. And, you know, I laid down water over this immediately after I drew my little design. I laid down water and then I glopped on the ink and I just had a good time. And it didn't create any problems at all. And I mean, this was wet. It took hours to dry. Probably I used way more water than I should have, but I just wanted to see how stable this is. And so it's good news for us who like this kind of thing that this uh, refill, uh, which will be available from Ferris Wheel Press, and they're going to release more details about it, is really good for this type of thing. And you, if you know who you are, if you're into this, you will understand this is really, really good. You know, so I just wanted to show you that. And then what I think we'll do next, let me just review my paper real quick here. <laughs> oh, I only had one cup of coffee, but let me tell you, I'm just spring loaded here. Okay. Um, it says Ferris Wheel Press's iconic hex hexagonal um, shape is carried out in the most stunning detail of the pen. The brass crown, and it is, it's, it's really impressive. I like it. I like how it's got that texture on it, and it's just really, really unique. I mean, you're not going to find anything that looks like that, I don't think. Okay, the crown rotates to engage the pen, and we looked at that. And it is in, intricately engraved to echo the mechanics of a printing press. Okay, that was the detail I was trying to remember. A nod to Ferris Wheel Press's history in printmaking and we went over the colors so oh and that was the thing i wanted to talk about the packaging because i don't have the packaging for this pen but um, in case you're not familiar they do really pay attention to detail with their packaging and this is the packaging for their brush fountain pen and it's just a beautiful slide box and the pen goes in there. And then this is the packaging for their ink chargers. So they, you know, these are gift worthy type things. And I expect that from the package when it comes uh, for this pen. And then their ink always comes in beautifully illustrated boxes and containers as well. So, and that's important sometimes. The details are important. 
and yes, it adds to the price, but it also makes these items like this gift worthy. I don't know if I really showed you how that, that's stunning. It really is a stunning pen. And um, I would have told you prior to getting this that I would never pay that price for a, a ballpoint pen, but really you have to kind of experience this to, <laughs> to realize um, what you're getting. And I would have said the same thing about the Retro 51, but someone, a pen friend sent me this and it has a rollerball refill in it. And it's just a really luxurious and nice pen, which I never would have probably thought, not that I could afford, but that I would have spent the money on, but now seeing what it is, goodness. You know, these, uh, it's in the materials, the workmanship and the, the quality. And so there you have it. So I think we'll switch views and I'll just jabber a little bit about what I like and don't like about the pen and whatever else is in my mind, I guess, which, could be a lot. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so Ferris Wheel Press, the Scribe, the ballpoint pen. I really like it. I do. I think it's very unique. There's a lot about this that you're just not going to see in any other pen. Whoops. <laughs> There's my glasses uh, giving me away there. It's got detail. It's got heft. It's got a really high quality... Um, insert uh, refill, I guess is what you'd call it. And I do like the weight. I find that that weight makes it really comfortable. There's nothing awkward about it. It's balanced. My hands are medium to small. I wear a medium, uh, women's medium glove. And so my hands are not big, but they're not tiny, I guess. Um, I really like that archival ink and, and the artwork really showed me that, that it definitely will hold up to throwing whatever you want to throw on top of it, which is really nice. Um, not much of an artist, but I do like doing that kind of thing. So um, <clears throat> I really can't think of anything really bad to say about the pen. You know, I really like it, but it is expensive. So that would be the one area where I'm not really knowledgeable enough about uh, ballpoint pens. And, and collectors would know better than I would, you know, where this uh, $58 uh, US falls into the pricing. I, I really don't know. And I'm not in the market for high-end uh, ballpoint pens generally. So one thing I will say is that they do have some bundles. So Ferris Wheel Press puts together bundles. And I, I just jotted a couple of them down. They've got one called the Jet Setter the executive, the ringleader, and the midway. So you'll want to go to their website and just check out what their specials are because that may bring bring it into uh, more doable if you're looking for ink too. Because Ferris Wheel Press is known for their fountain pen ink and their notebooks and their other stationary items, you know. So check into that. The other thing I wanted to address was this, um, I'm kind of an oddball in terms of getting these Ferris Wheel Press things sent to me because I like to do videos and I, I was crazy about their ink from the beginning and I was a supporter of their first uh, Kickstarter and that's how I got introduced to their ink and they've just treated me very kindly. Um, they do have an artist sponsorship program which I'm not a part of so I'm not sponsored and I'm not paid to do videos about their things but I have to check a little box for YouTube that says paid promotion so who knows what you'll see on the little um, you know on the in the corner of the video I'm not sure but I have to just be really you know disclose that that I didn't pay my own money for this and and so it's a uh, considered like a, a third party uh, you know <laughs> donation is the wrong word but you know it's still considered a paid promotion if, if uh, the item is sent to you. So anyway, that's more than you probably need to know. But I want to explain that. So I just have a really positive uh, uh, impression of this pen. Um, as we noted when we did our little test, it did, the ink wasn't quite as dark as on that uh, Pilot Dr. Grip. But I don't think that bothered me at all because it doesn't smear. And that's where, that's where it really is important. I like to highlight over things in my journal. And I like to, um, 
you know, do things like this where I make a, a nice mess and write over it or I, I do the drawing first and then do the uh, watercolor. So I think that's my review. Um, I have a favorable impression of it and I think it's going to be exciting, the launch and everything. That'll be later this month. Um, if you're watching this right away, I'm actually filming March 4th, 2021 and they're uh, expecting to release these on March 22nd. And I think, I really think the thing was that they were waiting for their packaging. So uh, people like me that had it sent to them didn't get the actual uh, packaging yet and probably will later down the line. Oh my God, I just realized I look like the Mad Hatter. I actually did wash my hair this morning, but it's a mess. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And I will kind of count on those of you who know more about ballpoint pens to help educate us in the comments. And, and I would really appreciate that. So let me know what you think of this and how it might uh, fit into an overall collection for you. Or if not a collection, um, just a, a high quality writing instrument to have with your notebook. And thank you for watching very much. And if you like videos like this, and if you like fountain pens and fountain penning, please consider subscribing. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.